Go ahead. Medellin Estate Subdivision located on the east side of Salt Road at the Forest Creek Equity Corp is requesting preliminary final subdivision and site plan approval. Uh, 79 lot single family residential subdivision on 69.5 acres. Located in RS3 single family residential district under the Court of Tom Lux. Good evening, members of the board. Jared Hurt with Evans Fox on behalf of the applicant for the Free Equity Court. Uh, just as a point of clarification, we're actually before the board tonight uh, for a concept sketch review. Just as by way of background, we previously went before the town board for a rezoning application back on March 18, 2021, going from an R2 to an R3. We were sent to this board back on April 6 of 2021 uh, for review and recommendations. And then after going before this board, we were sent back to the town board. Uh, it was May 6 of 2021, at which time we did get uh, our request for rezoning for this particular lot going from an R2 to an R3. So as I understand it, we're here tonight for sketch plan and concept review. I do know that uh, there's been some materials that have already been submitted to this board, which is reviewed in conjunction with the rezoning. Uh, with that being said, I'll turn it over to Walt Baker, who is the engineer uh, on this project. Good evening, Walt Baker with DSP Engineers. Uh, as Jared mentioned, we're here tonight for sketch plan. It's, as everybody is probably familiar with it, it's 69.5 acres plus or minus, uh, reference to 230 Salt Road. And uh, the layout that we have tonight is very similar to the one that we had at uh, the, the sketch plan review. Uh, the major change that occurred with this site plan is that we had to move the entrance, uh, which originally we had it lined up at this point, and we had to move it about 250 feet north uh, due to the Rural County DOT's requirement of not having a line intersection contrary to what you find in New York State DOT, but um, the Rural County DOT has this mindset that uh, opposing left turn movements would be better off if the streets were offset. So uh, we basically went into the town for a PRC review committee meeting prior to that change, and then uh, we made that subsequent change before we submitted in early July uh, for this meeting with that change. Uh, we also made a couple other comment changes from the PRC, which included a drain swale location and uh, the lot lines as far as uh, how they backed up to the salt road and the on-site detention facility. Uh, we do have, uh, obviously, public sewers, we have public water, there's been dedicated roads, uh, and the infrastructure throughout the site comply with all the town codes. Uh, we were proposing sidewalks, but uh, I think the sidewalks are going to be eliminated from the project. We still want street lights, so we're proposing street lights throughout the project. Uh, obviously, street lights at intersections are approximately every 250 feet of the street light. And you know, we can alternate those on either side of the street, uh, the street lighting. The uh, other comment that we received from PRC was that we had two detention facilities, one along Salt Road. And we had a second one to the north along the property line because the drainage divide, basically four drainage divides on this property and they all head down towards Salt Road and then the one, basically three of them head that way towards Salt Road and one heads off towards the north to adjacent property. And we had an on-site detention facility there. Comment we came back from the highway department is they didn't like the detention facility because again I guess as Josh mentioned in the previous application they don't prefer to have uh, detention facilities towards backyards. So we'll redesign that and move that and uh, accommodate that along Salt Road so we only have one on-site detention facility and now that we have the alignment of the streets being moved we have more area for that so uh, kind of falls into place. Comments other than that were a couple technical things about sewer laterals and manhole size and uh, like I mentioned and Jared mentioned that it, it's under R3 zoning and all the lots that we have on site are at least 22,000 
and higher. We've got some lots that are actually over an acre and three quarter acre in size. Uh, a lot of the lots are, are in excess of the 22,000 square feet. Do you have any questions? Walt, well, did you say that you're here before us for a sketch plan? Tonight, correct, yes. We actually submitted our application on a cover letter. Uh, we were under the impression after we, we went in for a sketch plan during the, the rezoning process that that rezoning meeting that we had with the sketch plan review and re review and recommendation from the planning board back to the town board. Uh, after we submitted the application, we were informed that we should probably follow uh, sketch plan review first and then come back to the final. The reason I'm asking is uh, yeah, the agenda you have in front of you was the previous, that's not the one that was sent out to the paper. Okay. It is, in fact, here for sketch plan. Okay. Review. That's what I was curious about. Yeah, so we're not having time to publish anything. That's true. Yeah. We've advertised here, uh, well, on my sheet, it's preliminary final subdivision. That was before I went into the paper that was originally okay. proposed. Is that the publish was for sketch plans? Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So basically, it's a sketch plan review. If you have any comments, then we obviously incorporate those comments along with the PRC comments that we received. and. Uh, Incorporate those into the, the set of plans and, and resubmit the primary final. It's uh, 79 lots overall, and we're going to do the first section is 23. You know what? Again, this isn't a public hearing. Why do we get a letter well, we then? We got a letter from them that it was a public hearing today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what? It is in the public hearing. It's published as. I'm sorry. I mean, but, but what we'll do? We'll open. Is it okay if we open it anyways? Is that? You know, you can get up and speak. No different. Mm -hmm. Just the opportunity to speak. That's fine by me. Okay. Okay. Good. So if you want to say something, you're more welcome. Give you like three minutes. Yeah. You can start any now. Any comments on it? Go ahead. Marky Wallace, 237 South Road. I reside right across the street from where this will be. And I guess I have a couple of questions and concerns. Uh, if this is your proposed sketch plan, uh, the latest thing I saw was a pretty good sized retention pond along a good stretch of Salt Road. Um, my personal concern is most everybody here that has an across the street neighbor as a neighbor, when they look out their front door, they look across at their neighbor's front doorstep. I'm not going to have that option. Where I'm at, I'm going to look at the back of these group of houses here. So what I'd like is the town to listen to me, request or require them to put some sort of a berm up against what would be the east side of Salt Road. No matter what I do looking out my window, I'm always going to look at something across the street. Now I understand. Top of a house, a roof line, that's one thing. But looking out my front door across the street to my new neighbors, I shouldn't feel like I should have to look at swing sets, decks, sheds, hot tubs, and such. The other concern I had was with the size of that retention pond, like a lot of retention ponds, what do you got planned to keep the water moving to anything at all? Because otherwise, if there's nothing to keep them moving, we all know they become pretty stagnant, and then become a mosquito swarm. Another thing that just occurred to me is I've looked across the street from this field for eight years now, and the very crops have got planted across the time to get a whole different section of cross section of wildlife that comes in and feeds. Geese is one of them. So I also see with this pond. Unless there's some way to keep them from migrating out to the road, they're always going to be out to the road. Or worse yet, in my front yard. <laughs> so I guess these are concerns that I have from my perspective. I know a lot of these people have their concerns about yours. It is a bird. Now, speaking of the bird, a good, good example would be on Phillips Road off the intersection of Phillips and Schlegel, uh, the Meadows development. Mm -hmm. They've got a very, very nice 
two foot size berm so people driving down Phillips Road see basically what I would hope to see the top of the house and the roof of the house. You don't see the goings on in the backyard. Um, the berm has been nicely seated, nicely planted, nicely maintained, which is another concern that is, uh, needs to be addressed. If you did do something in the form of a berm, so I have a buffer for people from the people's backyard, I also need some assurances that it's going to be maintained. I don't want to all of a sudden have a berm across the street for me to hide the houses, but now I got just about every imaginable weed or what have you growing in it, nothing being root. I don't spend the time I spend on my property to keep it nice and look across the street to see something like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have to address it. Walt, you want to comment on the other? Um, I'm the site engineer, but uh, we'll take it under advisement with the owner. Obviously, we can look at those concerns and uh, come up with some ideas on how we can address that and we'll come back at preliminary with uh, some answers. And we did talk about burning one yeah. point earlier on, too. Yeah, we did. Yes. Right. right. The highway guy, he was obviously, he needs access to the pond. So the he pond, likes the fact yeah, that the pond being along Salt Road was easy access because the town maintained yeah. the outfall structure. And uh, he didn't want us to put out, you know, we were thinking about putting trees along Salt Road and then the pond. And he doesn't want to have, he's got to maintain the pond, so he didn't want to have anything impeding his, his pathway along Salt Road. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about doing something on the other side of the pond. You know, as far as we did show on the plan, like vegetation, some trees, groupings of trees at the corners of the property line so people would know where their property line is. And, and obviously, what we do, homeowners come in and they embellish the land anyway, so they're going to be adding more to it. But we did have that on the plan. Where's the depth of those lots right there along? Not the pond is, but the others along Salt Road. Along Salt Road? Pretty deep, aren't they? These lots here? Yeah, they're actually, because of the pond area, they're 430 feet deep. Yeah, so for yeah. the possibility, maybe you should try to consider putting a berm. Twice the depth of the Which standard, makes sense, you know? right? The standard um, R3 lot is like 220. Yeah, yeah. these yeah. are like 430. So if there's a burn on the back of that, yeah, that's good. Um, as far as maintenance, I don't know, you can't guarantee maintenance because you privately own that in the yards. You have to the individuals to take care of it. Right, right. that's why we were thinking along the line of evergreens, maybe some deciduous trees, so you have some color. Okay. All right, something to consider then. Put in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone else wishing to speak? For around the crown. Has there been any thought of putting in natural vegetation or nice that keeps from wanting to? Well, generally, going generally around, most walking the road, most some kind of natural right. pushing in shrubs, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, when you design the stormwater facilities, the federal government and also New York State, all the way down the line, wants us to uh, provide certain slopes on the edge of the pond. So what you do is you end up getting cattails. And they like that because that keeps the geese away from the kids. The geese won't go through obstruction. If you have it all nicely mowed all the way down, they can walk right in. You know, if, it's, if it has cattails around, around the perimeter, it's too difficult for them to go away. Now, I've got it near my office in Greece. We've got a pond right next door to us, and uh, they go across the road. They don't even bother with it. Is there some kind of a, a maintenance plan as part of this, to, so people know? Well, it's really to their benefit, not to cut the grass up to the edge? Well, that's what we were talking about with uh, the PRC committee, as far as putting a demarcation line, because there'd be an easement around the pond area, which would be for the town, so it's kind of like, a homeowner association would say, okay, let's delineate where people are going to go and what they're going to do. You know? So we have to talk about that. And that's why we're thinking about doing the trees and groupings at the property corners, you know, to kind of block or give them a sense of here's your limit line. And the lots are accessible. Thank you. Any I guess the next step then would be to come up with a whole
Hello, my name is Cheryl Adis. I live at 215 Salt Road, so across the street from the development. Uh, so I have a, four concerns right now. One is the new location of the driveway, the road out, will probably now come right in front of my property. Uh, so if this is 80 homes or 79 homes or homes we have here, if there's, you know, again, surveys say that if there's eight trips out and about, of that I'll get over 640 trips of headlights coming into my house or coming into you know that coming into my property, which I'm not sure I'm, I don't know how I feel about that right now. I do want to also another concern is again following Mike the burn issue. Um, when we built the Briarwood is next to my um, the side of my property. The Briarwood has a nice burn going in between my property and the road that goes into Briarwood. Uh, however, an initiative has come up with the um, developers developing the property, but then when all the houses are developed, they wash their hands of maintaining those properties. Um, and so now I have dead trees, I have a neighbor who has to maintain the property because no one is maintaining it, as well as the retention ponds that are in the back if I was a homeowner that was next to one of those retention ponds because it is truly full of algae and mosquitoes and et cetera. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, but it, again, it's not being maintained like the developers had promised in the initial um, development of Briarwood. The paths are not being, being maintained uh, as they would be these nice walking paths around the ponds, et cetera. So um, I would have concerns about those things as well because it's, yeah, and that's going to be facing that right now, as well as this um, displacement. And then the last comment that I do want to make is the um, drainage culvert that comes into my property truly uh, floods my property um, that is to drain back into, I believe it's Four Mile Creek or whatever, that's back into the woods behind my property. So I get, um, in any substantial rain, um, of a lake, if you will, um, and my property line um, through, the middle of my, through the middle of my properties. So I want to make sure that what's going to be done, again, concerning the stormwater ponds, that these become you know, mosquito dusted and, and maintained, but also what's to stop them from continuing to drain and flood my property, which is across the street. You're located your frontage lot in Salt Road? I'm frontage lot, uh, right. I'm the frontage lot next to, so I would be just in north. right here. So north of your, the old is the old exit. Okay. Not the other way. Okay, so you're, so you're right here. Yes. Okay. So the entrance is here and we lined it up with the property line. No one will point into anybody's house. Well, you're on that too. So these two, are these the two lot, large lots? Those are, those are both mine. And that's my name. Mm -hmm. And that's my sister. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're, you're repeating on my family compound. <laughs> so I'm going to stop with that right now. Okay. Actually, the way it was originally designed, I'm sure you all remember, was it lined right up at the street across the path over yeah. the last year. Then the county asked, <coughs> the county asked them to change it. Why? Well, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to. Okay, so I'm just going to present that. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We should probably say to everybody here. Uh, right, we did have to relocate the entrance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't line it up with anybody's driveway. We didn't line it up with anybody's house. We actually lined it up with a property line just so we would not be having headlights point at somebody's house. Oh, and as far as that culvert she's talking about, it's a 12-inch culvert that's in this area here. Mm -hmm. And we're not even going to utilize it because it's too small for us to drain into it. So basically we're diverting that drainage and we're going to send it over to the other culvert, which is uh, the one they just repaired and they repaved re the road. So we're going to send the water over there. So it really wasn't anything we'd want to use because, it, like I said, I can see where it floods. 
but they undersized when they built a pipe, you know, when they just put a 12 inch pipe, it's not it's that substantial, it's not okay. adequate for what's needed. Mm -hmm. so. so you're diverting it back. <clears throat> we'll send you over, right? We're gonna, we're actually gonna, as I mentioned before, we had a pond heading to the north because the drainage comes through and it heads to the north. And then there was a divide that comes down through and goes through that pipe you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And with the redesign that we're doing, in fact, our original design, we didn't even want to use that pipe because it's, like I mentioned, it's 12 inch pipe. So now we're going to eliminate this. We're just going to utilize it along Salt Road. So we'll have one storm, storm facility along Salt Road. So there won't be a storm facility north of the... No, we're going to, we're going to take that out. All right, we're going to take this out. We won't use that pipe, that 12 inch pipe there. Be maybe just some backyard drainage. That drainage divide that I mentioned, the drainage swale that comes down through there, that'll be eliminated. So there'll be a little bit of drainage from the, from the house that's there, you know, the yard, but that's about it. It won't be anything substantial. We're going to be basically reducing that by tenfold. So, so in the alignment, again, I didn't agree with it. I called Monroe County DOT and uh, went over it quite substantially with the guy that's in charge now and he's telling me it's been their policy for a number of years to offset that and all the engineering that I've done and all the, the design manuals for traffic control show streets lined up but in their opinion they want to keep them offset because when two people are pulling out making a left turn they're thinking somebody's going to have a conflict and they feel that it creates more gaps on the road. Okay. Well, this isn't marketplace. You know, it's not like it's a heavily traveled road where you're going to have problems where people with you know opposing streets are going to have difficulty. Everybody yields to the right, like a normal intersection, and that's it. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't bend. I'm a little concerned just about traffic because we are there's golf course on our road, and right. people coming up from Lake Road, and then the extensive number of houses here. Right. And as far as that park lane you're talking about, or that was a cluster development on that project next to you. And I see what you're saying, because I think they had open space that, that was part of an association. Or, yes. And the association just kind of doesn't take care of it. So we don't have that. It's all private blocks. Well, the, yeah, that's a whole different scenario there. It's a HOA. They should have an organization where they do their general maintenance. Well, similar to what Rudy was talking about, if they have an association where they're collecting association fees every month, then they have a means to maintain those grounds where apparently that project never did or whatever happened with that design. All right. Anyone else? My name is Dean Lucas, and I am 297 Road, which is basically just the entire south line of where this is going to be. And like Mike was saying, uh, he doesn't really like looking out at somebody's backyard. I'm going to be looking at at least seven of them. I mean, I haven't counted them, but I'm going to be literally looking like when my daughter, my granddaughter is swinging, I'm going to be looking in somebody's backyard. When I go off to my hot tub, I'm going to be looking. What I would like is if we could have some better buffer zone. We have had, we said that there's like a uh, hedgerow there with, full of trees. The, the trees are really nothing more than brush. They're falling down. There's a few tall trees that were put in by, I think, Bob put those in years ago. But at any rate, they're, they're tall trees. They're not a lot of blockage at all. I had um, the lawyer that was, you know, helping me look into how it would possibly change from large lot to R2 in 2018, I think it was, 2018, without me ever knowing that that was happening, without any of the neighbors knowing that that was happening. And yet, it happened. Uh, the lawyer said we got four months and then we had to fight the court, $30,000 to get back to large lot, and then all we had to do was do it again. So I opted to not go that route, at least at this point. However, um, what I'm asking is maybe some sort of an easement or like a, um, something where the, the, it's a restricted deed or something and have some real blockage. Um, I believe the 
lawyer sent to talk to you, and you were saying they were sending other things or whatever? Yeah, she spoke with me. So yeah, I, so I spoke with Mr. Weisner. Yeah, and, that's, and that would be good. I would like some way to know that the landowner, you know, the new house isn't going to just chop it down. I, I would love to have a perm, like they were saying, which I think was in my initial offer to you. Um, and I realized that a lot of size, a lot of size. Are you are you still using Mr. White Star? Yes. Okay. So I, I could reach out to him tomorrow. Um, that would be great. great. I would I wouldn't mind even like that if you want to give me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You guys you gotta direct your yes. stuff oh, up. Sorry, you guys would have a conversation. No, I, he said that he was gonna get in touch with my lawyer and see you know if we can't find some mutual uh, Now let me ask you a question. You I think I got you right. You your property line is to the north line no, of this to the south oh. and the south the entire line of this. I'm two ninety south. south or two two ninety south. Yeah. yeah, two ninety south. And, and, and the okay. other D is okay. north side. So okay, I was in the wrong location there. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's heavily brushed in there now? It's it's garbage brush, yeah. It's just okay. not not but heavily. It's but, one one edge row and so there's one tree every I want to say maybe four feet and the trees fall down like every month. There's you know, it has to be done. And Bob used to do it, now I do it. Yeah, this came up the last video. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm I would like if there was some like easement or like restricted deeds. Well, what, you get, what we've done in other areas in the past is uh, subdivision comes back back to back to another subdivision, and we've left like 40 foot strip, you know, 20 foot and 20 foot where it's a, you just don't touch it. Yeah, no, I and like that. There's especially. no beauty in it, but it's overgrown. And what happens in a few years? It's overgrown. I agree. You know, and it makes a natural buffer between. I, I like that idea. I'm so thinking, maybe the thing to do, Walt, is consider just leaving leaving a 20, 20 foot of that backyard. What do you think? If you, if you do that, if you could do <coughs> that, then why not a berm? Yeah, that, that was one of the... It's a shame to, it's a shame to put a berm and tear good trees, trees out. You know? There's no good there, trees. There, no, there, there's, there's no good trees. Now. There's no good trees. No, they're, 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 they're all no, like no, that's like you say that it's, it's just brush now. Okay. So if we, what I would like to add, like what you were saying, that 20... <coughs> If they're going to give up 20 and 20, I would like to have a perm. If we had a perm, then could then I can plant the arborvitaes or they can plant arborvitaes, mm -hmm. something to divide. Like, oh, the reason I bought the house I'm in is because of that feature. I, I like the wild, which Webster did at one point have some wild. Salt Road now is nothing more than Henrietta yeah. to me, and it's in it's where I live. And quite honestly. I would sell it in a minute if it didn't have, I have meant like uh, attachment to it. I lost a son in 2016, so he's still part of this house. He helped like remodel this house with me. And so for me to sell that is exceedingly difficult to do. Otherwise, believe me, I would have a for sale sign up as soon as I heard that 2018, you guys slid something every need to go. Period. So, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not like, I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm a I'm a builder, so I understand you can go through where people can really be a thorn in your side. I'm not trying to be that. I'm mm -hmm. trying to be reasonable and have something that we can both be happy. Fair, fair enough. Um, members of the board, Tony, we did. Uh, at least I should say I did. I had conversations with uh, Mr. Whitesar, who is the other attorney, uh, and we, we had some dialogue already in some ways to mitigate it. Uh, I'll reach out to him tomorrow. And we weren't far apart, I wouldn't even say we were apart. He went on vacation and we just need to reconnect, frankly. So I'll reach out to him tomorrow um, and, and open that communication with that. Okay. That's good. Excuse me, Walt. Do you have your training plan yet? I'm just, because a lot of your property line, if I'm, if I'm looking at your grading plan, Correct. It occurs to you have somewhat of a burn proposal. Sorry? It looks like you may have a burn proposal. We did. We did. Consideration. 
about the berm or some kind of buffer zone. Obviously, we didn't show any trees at it, but I mean, did, I'm sorry about that. You, I mean, yeah, you whispered in my ear. What did you say? You were thinking about doing the berm? No, we only got, got one. You did it. Then you have one on the plan. Okay, okay. and see, I guess I didn't know yeah. that. All right, you thought that. Then. All right. Thank you. The other one last thing that comes down. My wife Get closer to the mic. As far as the street lights, is that something you're required to have? No. The street lights, I don't know that any neighbor, no, any neighbor here wants to have street lights. That's like no. we live in the village. We didn't move into the village on purpose. Exactly. That might have been. I, I, I can tell. <laughs> Let's put him on the spot for a change. He's been awful quiet over here. <laughs> that's that's one thing. And then my wife said to mention that I have. I, I have a big playground for my grandkids as well as other people that lost my mother, their great grandmother. Mm -hmm. And this is like, I mean, it's literally so close to that. That's why I'm looking for the park. That's why I'm looking for the park. Okay, we can do that previously, so we did that. Yeah, did you see that playground? That's a $26,000 playground. <laughs> my mom left us money for yeah. all of us that we didn't know she had, and I spent that in her respect. She's got plaques all over. Yeah. It's a beautiful job of Jim. Yeah, okay. No, this is a big young gym. <laughs> Anyways, yes, and that, and you know, I mean, so maybe we have to put a fence. I'm, I'm afraid of people like walking just, you know, mm -hmm. 20 feet across the line, and then they're on my feet. Mr. Lucas? Yeah, it's not a swing spot. I mean, it is. Hold on, wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Give us your name and address, first of all. Same address, I'm his wife, Brenda. You gotta be up with the white. Okay. It, it's not a swing <laughs> spot. I mean, I don't want somebody to think, oh, it's just a swing spot, like in everybody else's backyard. It's a playground. I mean, it's 40 feet long and 18 feet deep. And it's literally like right here. And I am just concerned that the kids right here in this backyard, there's no like buffer. What's to stop them from, they're gonna be, oh, hey, they're gonna wander right through and think it's an actual playground. Um, I mean, our lot is rather large, so it's a huge, it looks like it would be a park. Um, and that's going to be a concern of us as homeowner that if we're not even home, kids wander over, they're on this huge playground, and they get hurt. I mean, that's, that's just, it's, it's so close to that line. And there's really not, it's not something we can just pick up and move. I mean, it was professional being installed, brought in a flatbed. Well, they are putting a berm along them. That's what we're just yes. talking about. Yeah. If, if they're, and who's going to maintain that? This is this an HOA? No, this would be under the property, property owner that would maintain the whole portion. What's to stop them from like, getting rid of the burden? Yeah. It's because it's very good. I think the new homeowners want privacy as well, don't you? Is there? Okay, we got to get this thing going. Yeah, so free, free, free. Free. Yeah. It just and then we're done. But isn't there a way that the town could, you know, have an easement or like a restricted deed? It does happen, right? Okay, Mr. Lawyers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the only way you can accomplish that is, is by doing a potential conservation easement through there. But uh, just something I could talk to, to Mr. Weisshart about. All right. Which could limit what they can do with that. Thank okay. Thanks. All right, Dean. Yeah, another Dean. My name is Dean Bay. I live on 152 South Road, and um, I'm just I'm hoping we can come to some softening with helping everybody in the neighborhood and keep everything happy. Um, I know you guys have worked hard at, at it first. Um, I live in the north. I own all land in the north, and I'm, I have no no future plans right now to do anything. I, I'm a wild. I love hunting and fishing and all that. But I was wondering if you could put in the plans uh, a, a future a future way to my property. Actually, I can speak to that. Because um, I actually uh, emailed Mr. Weissart, who I think you're using yeah. as well, about having a potential meeting with, yeah. with us to talk about. Okay. Um, because I think some of the things that you initially have requested um, aren't feasible given the contours of the land and how it's laid out. But we wanted to, to discuss further with you possible ways to do it. Um, so if you want to reach out to, to Peter tomorrow, um, again, when I reach out to him to talk to him about uh, Lucas's questions and concerns, uh, raise that to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and the lighting, 
I, I, I also agree with that one. <laughs> no street lights. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> 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 Almost at 9.30, so. You're okay, don't keep worry it short. About it. My name is Ben Hammond Center. I live, uh, can we scroll up just a little bit? So I'm on the, the eastern edge. Uh, I counted from my seat. I don't know how, if I had everything here, but about 12 houses that will back up to our property line. Um, the way that the lay of the land is right now, there is a, a good chunk, maybe 30 yards, 20, 30 yards of pine trees that are 40 to 60 feet tall that run and divide our property from the properties that are here. And so one of the questions I have is, are those trees going to stand? Are they stay in the plan? Are they going to get taken down? Our backyard, uh, there's not a lot of buffer without those trees there between our property and the proposed properties. And I just want to second, third, everybody about the, uh, the street lights. I'd rather not have street lights in the backyard. So, so I can speak. Yeah. Give it a I don't know that I stated my address. It's five basket, so I'm coming in from the other side. <clears throat> I think he's on the first page. Basically, uh, all we understood that the pine trees were there with our initial review of the site, and we actually made those lots deeper because the overall depth of the property from east to west was such that we're not impacting any of it. I mean, we literally, if you look at the tree line, see this little squiggly line here? Yeah. That's the tree line that comes into these lots. Okay. We made these lots 350 feet deep. Mm -hmm. So. The usable space they got is here. All our contours, our proposed contours, mm -hmm. stop outside the tree line, so we're not going into the tree line. Sure, sure. I guess to to um, the Lucas's concerns and concerns from from the crosstown builders that we talked to before, um, that signage that the sign could or that the town could help put in. This property is different, right? Because it's not zoned as an easement to the town or as a uh, uh, conservation easement. It doesn't butt up the town property. Um, the difference here is that somebody comes in and they say, okay, yes, yeah, sure, you gave us a larger lot, we're going to use that larger lot, those trees are now gone, I'll have, you know, missing teeth in, in the trees and pieces going back to our property line. So I don't know that that can change, but that's my concern in this area. Because if they're independent lots, there's no HOA that says that, you know, we're going to keep, we're going to maintain all the borders in this, in this specific way, then Everybody gets to make their own decision about those trees staying or not staying. Some pretty good sized trees back there too, aren't they? They're 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 very good trees. Yeah. yeah Most people when they have a wooded lot like that, they, the they, they want to preserve it. Yeah. That's why we make lots of trees. So if somebody wants to put a pool in their backyard or whatever swing sets or what have you, we made those dish lots. Room like that. We compensated mm -hmm. for that. Tree. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Talk to the attorney about a conservation easement, but then you get into the fact that it's in their deed. Mm -hmm. Generally, the neighbors police each other. I mean, yeah. the neighbors all know that. Yeah, I have neighbors, I have friends on Bannerwood, uh, off a of county line road, and uh, there's neighbors that are at war over that yeah. over that competition. Uh, some people going in and clearing all the woods out behind them that they're not supposed to. Right. And other neighbors saying, hey, look, I understand that you can clear everything out on your own, behind your own place, but I'm going to respect the rules and I'm not, I don't clear anything behind mine. So that's touch and go. I'm not very, I'm not very confident that that's uh, I, I think the, the best way really is already like, making the lots deeper and then leaving it there. You're, you're allowing people the ability you know, to, to put things in that they want. I mean, they're going to put it closer to the house. If you want a pool, you want a playground, sure. you're not going to go on the other side of the trees. And most people, oh, I'm sorry. Most people want that offer 
just like you do. Right. Um, so I think really the proper planning is really going to provide for what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that with the depth. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Else up? Else up? All right. Um, you got a couple notes to add on there, and that's about it, I guess. Yeah, so the the next thought process from our standpoint would be to come back for another uh, stretch play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Read my mind. Yeah. Uh, or preliminary final. Uh, no, you know what? I was talking to Josh about this. Either way, if you came in and got a preliminary tonight, mm -hmm. we, we, now you're adding a few things onto this. We more than likely would have said, you know what? We'll give you a preliminary, come back for a final. Still two meetings. Sure. Tonight you've got this. Everything is in order, preliminary and final in one night. Don't no, deal. We, we so, agree. Yeah. You know, it, it's not extending it at all. It's just covering all the bases with it. That's the way I see it. Oh, we, we couldn't agree with you more. I think tonight's meeting was productive, hopefully. Yeah. Everyone in the audience. There was some good comments. Yeah, no, I, we agree. 100%. That helps a whole lot. That's why we uh, sketch a plan when you even open it. You know, give people the opportunity to speak. They know the neighborhood better than we do. Okay, we're all set, I guess. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, okay. In terms of making sure everything is done according to the books, i got to reiterate my request for the full BAF form. Oh, okay. Uh, the BAF form I have here is a short form, and it's specifically for rezoning anyway. So I would like to see the full environmental impact statement form. Yes, I think there was uh, some confusion on that end because the, the town board had designated itself lead agency and required uh, we submitted a short form in and then I spoke to Raja about that in terms of the law. So I, I understand your request. Okay. Thank you. So we will be receiving it. Yep. I'm talking to my client about that. So, yep. We'll, we'll send it. Yeah, we're, we're sending it. <laughs> I'm going to talk. Raja just sent me over the information today. So. I'll take, I'll take it. Okay.